Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. Please welcome, for the first time on the podcast, comedian Violet Jones. Oh. Hi. Hi, finally, Steve. Finally, it's great to meet you for the first time. It's great to meet you yeah. for the first time. How are you time? feeling? You know what? Super nervous because I've never been here before. You haven't. You do look similar to a past guest. Oh, really? Who? Yeah. Um, I think her name was Veronica or Victoria or Ma- Vanessa? Vanessa Johnston? Yeah. That girl's a bitch. <laughs> Horror. You shouldn't you have look, had her on. You look very similar. She's Do you garbage. ever get that on the street? Sometimes. Because a lot of people are like, do you, you look like this D-list comedian. Yeah. That has almost 100,000 followers on Instagram. Are you? And then I'm like, no, I don't want to be associated with her. But you do have, a, you have 100,000? Yeah, just hit 100,000. Can we, um. Can we do a little celebration? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I bought to all the them. influencers and people and comedians and entertainers trying to get there, yeah. what did you do to get there to 100K? Sure. Go ahead. You go to instafollowers.com. <sighs> real talk. $100. No, 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 no real talk. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. For real, for yeah, real, yeah. for real. Uh, instafollowers.com, $100. No. Um... You know what? I my some of my reels just went viral during COVID. Some stand up clips. So describe what a reel is. Is it a variety of different types of content? It's uh so on Instagram they do this thing where they got the reels right. It's basically like Instagram's TikTok. Mm Mm-hmm. And we we're starting to implement for Scissor Bros reels. Isn't it crazy how it gets more views? It's crazy. It's it insane how like you can post a video. There's people that have like 100 followers. You post a reels video yeah. and it gets a million views and you blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you discover that? Did Tori, did, did Tori tell you? No. Shout out to Tori Piskin. Actually, Tori did tell me. Shout how? out. Uh, she did. Shout out to Tori. Tori She's Piskin. She's been here before. Be- one of my best friends. Yeah. Really? She almost came tonight. I almost brought her as a plus one. You shut up. That's the homie. I yeah. love Tori. Yeah, we I get know. along good. We'll do a little co podcast. Not only that, I uh, the VR last time, she, yeah, I, I made her do the VR and she was freaking out to go in an elevator. Right? Yeah. She couldn't do it. You want to do it after? I would love to. You'll jump off the building. I I will try. You're from Minnesota, right? Yeah. What's the biggest building you know in Minnesota? Like the, t- the tallest. The tallest. I don't know. Just think of the tallest. The U.S. Bank. Okay, think of that. <laughs> and think <laughs> about, wait, hold up. Think about <laughs> jumping off the top of that. Yeah. Would uh, Would you do it? I, I think so. I've skydived. Oh, then you could do it. That's no big deal. <laughs> I've skydived. I want to get into your trajectory as far as, because, all right, the joke's over. She mm-hmm. did have a name change. Mm-hmm. Why the name change from Vanessa Johnson to... Uh, Violet Jones. Violet Jones. Sorry. Well, I'm still- Violet Jones is supposed to be more memorable, but apparently <laughs> it's not going well. Uh, dude, I don't know. It's just You know what? During COVID, some people got bangs. Some people got air fryers. Mm-hmm. I got a new name. Is it because of, because um, I know um, 
I've heard stories from the comedy store, like uh, rest in peace, Mitzi Shore. Yeah. But she used to tell certain comedians like, uh, hey, you should do this name instead of that name. Mm-hmm. It's more marketable. Is that kind of the reason why? Yeah, just because, you know, Johnson and Johnston. Yeah, nobody like ever Daniel Johnston, yeah. Johnson, they're like, is it Johnston? Is it, uh, this is boring. They're like, yeah. no one, you know, like my name was just a boring, it was a boring name that, no one could really remember. And then also, I just did too much ayahuasca during COVID. That that's so crazy because yeah. I was watching. That's crazy she said that, right? Because right when you when, when my intern walked in, she she I was watching a video and it was an ayahuasca video. Have you done it? No, but it said that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't it bring out like your worst fears? Mm-hmm. And then... Also, like this woman that I was talking said a, a negative entity attached to her uh, through her uh, experience. Oh, yeah. What was your experience like? Well, I could see that because so the belief is that ayahuasca, which is a, a tea that originally was brewed in the Amazon. In the Peru, right? She said Peru. Yeah, okay. in the Amazon. Amazon people for like thousands of years. Psy- psychoactive, too. Psychoactive. Yeah. The Brunth's tea. And it. Basically, it creates a lot of DMT in your system naturally. Yeah. Which DOT, DMT is naturally in your system, but it only is released in your body when you're born and when you die. Wow. Otherwise, what about when you, because my dad passed two years ago, mm-hmm. and in the nursing home, uh, he was catatonic, and, um, he, you know, they took the feeding tube out of his uh, belly button or whatever. And, but I was there one night, like, uh, like two, three in the morning, and out of nowhere, he opened his eyes and he was looking at the ceiling. So is that was he getting some sort of ayahuasca experience? Because I think Maybe. he was seeing ghosts or something. It's possible. So the, s- the scientists believe that, based on studying people's bodies, what the DMT comes through when you're born, when you die. The belief mm-hmm. is is that it's the chemical that lets your spirit leave your vessel. Yeah. Holy smoke! And come in. <laughs> Ooh, that's scary. So when yeah. you take ayahuasca, you more or less mimic that experience, that experience, which is why. So it thins the veil between this realm and like all the other realms of the world and yeah. the universe and, and what you could consider, I would say, God. So theoretically, you could because that veil is so thin, an evil thing could come could through that. Come through. You're opening a portal to it. To yeah. It. It's kind of like a Ouija board. Like, no. you know how you No. No, I. I think I don't. I've never. Have you experimented with Ouija boards at all? I don't. Only I've only I'm seen the scared. movies because uh, ever since I've seen The Exorcist, because You're you know like, Reagan no. does play with it near the ping pong table, uh-huh. and look what happened to her. Not good. <laughs> yeah. Not good. So not a fan. So uh, I don't really mess with that kind of. I respect it, and mm-hmm. I know the powers that there, it's powerful, and that things could happen. And I do believe in ghosts. Mm-hmm. So continue with your experience. Like, how long did it take to kick in? It's like an hour. You take this tea. So you, tea. you set up, you're here with all these shamans. Yeah. There's all these guys that are, a lot of them are Native American. So are they wearing feel. like, um, like straw underwear or something? Definitely, <laughs> definitely, so. definitely tapped into their heritage. You know? Yeah. So it's like apocalypto, like for real. A little bit. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. It's a damn, damn yeah, good yeah. movie. Damn it's a great good, good movie. movie. Great, good movie. Good great movie. movie. Okay. So you got like a bunch got of shamans. Beads, yeah. And they got, do they got war paint on their face? No, that would definitely, I think that would <laughs> scare people. That would be a PTSD. Yeah, oh, for sure. Scare from Continue. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you're, so you're with the home. Are you by you're with, the, you're you're with all these, these shamans and they're all, there's a bunch of people in the room that all got pre-screened and you're all sitting there with these shamans and they do prayers. So they, they bless the space. They do all these like sacred symbols. I, I mean, it, 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 when you first see it, you're like, this is a joke. You're like, Are I'm you an, in I'm a tent gonna, or outside? Some people do in a tent, but this is a, it's, this was, I did it in a house. Is it a sweat lodge or a house? It was a house. It was a house house. Yeah, it was a house Continue. house. Continue. So they're doing this smoke, these symbols. They're praying over it. Yeah. Like, were they lighting? Like, Palo Santo? Palo Santo. Do you smell it in here? I lit some before. Yeah, yeah I like y'all it. Came. Yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. Good I wanted vibes. To cl- I want to clear the air. Good vibes. Yeah, good vibes. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Continue. Um, so you, you're sitting there and you, you, um, they're praying over it. And then. What kind of prayers? Just. They're just doing these like weird things with their hands. What are you doing? Like, what are you? What is this? Like making crosses with their hands. They're doing this. Circles. They're doing this. That's it's, it's good. secret shaman all right, wisdom. All right. yeah, that's why you you pay like a thousand dollars because oh, you're that's like, that's cool. It's <laughs> worth the experience. Yeah, yeah. Continue. So because the belief is is that they protect the space from evil spirits. Ooh, I'm getting anxiety just thinking just thinking about, about it. Continue, yeah. I'm just <laughs> you chilling. feel like you're there. Keep talking. Bro. So then they start doing. 
they start playing like drums. They sort of like, uh, oh, sounds like Wolf of Wall yeah, Street, yeah, but it's oh, not like yeah. that. Is it like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Are you sure yeah, you're yeah. not a shaman, dude? <laughs> I'm just guessing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Sh- shaman Steve? I'd sign up for that. <laughs> okay, and then how, got long the how long is that? I don't know, because then the ayahuasca kicks in and it's like time it, disappears. But you said it, it takes an hour. Time disappears when it, it kicks do- in. It does? Yeah. Time. Does it hit you? Does it, is it um, progressive or does it hit you like a like a wave on your So head? I did it six times during COVID and every time I did it Wait, was... repeat co- what you just said. I did it six times during COVID. Every time it was different, Steve. Now, did you see... An, did you have a conversation with the alien at any time? No aliens, but I talked to like my dad who's dead. When did your dad pass? He committed suicide like a couple years ago. Ooh, Actually, a month yeah, after yeah. I was on the podcast. That's insane. Yeah. So all of those things come up. Come up. All of the repressed mm-hmm. negative stuff, you're mm-hmm. forced to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And you had a conversation with your deceased father? My dad. Tell me about that. Um, Holy smokes. I had issues feeling for years. And I'd done so much like therapy. I went to therapy. I read books. I did acting class. Like... Everything you could possibly do to feel. And I couldn't feel. Wow. I couldn't cry. I was like, I was, and I thought I was broken. I f- actually thought maybe I was like a, like a serial killer, like a sociopath. Cause like, you know how they miss that part of their brains, like the empathy. Yeah. But so I got like really fucked up, but I, I was, I, I was on the, I was on the, they call it the medicine. So I was on ayahuasca and I hear this voice and, um, I was like, I, why am I broken? And I hear this voice in your head, or is it it's like you're talking outside? to God? It's like an omnipotent voice. Holy moly, guacamole! When it happens, you're like, wait, am I going insane? But it says things that are like so. I mean, the voice says things that are so wise that you're like, this has to be something. Now, not, is not it me. one voice or a legion of voices? I just have one voice. And it, is it like whispers? No, it's very clear try can you try Talking. to um, recapture that yeah so like i was sitting there very upset because like the people next to me were talking like having a weird experience and the voice goes you need to be like the river the river is powerful it moves along but it doesn't try to control everything it around flows. it it, it flows. flows and it said they are them and you are you continue let that let it go what's yeah. happening so i'm sitting there and all of a sudden i'm trying to figure out this like feeling thing and all of a sudden it's like the whole i start seeing a movie like an old time movie like you know those tvs from yeah, like the 90s like charlie chaplin shit yeah like kind of fuzzy yeah. but more like home movies like home 90s movies. home movies but it, there's an actual screen or yeah. you could see a visual of it yeah and then i and then all of a sudden it was Do like you go into it like yeah and you go into it In- and you're watching it. That's in so crazy. VHS tape. You're in the tape. And it's me. And I'm like five years old. And like my family's house. My dad's there. Co- cooking? or doing No, he's just talking he's to just me. Chilling? And I'm crying. And my dad's like, don't cry. Feelings are bad. He used to say that to you? I guess. I didn't really like. Yeah, he did. But I didn't realize that it affected me. Right. So he's like, don't feel. Feelings are bad. And then I hear the voice go, like a voiceover over my home movie that I couldn't even, I didn't even remember. But it's like, the voice said, this is when you shut off your feelings. I was like five years old. And then all of a sudden, the movie rewinds. And it replays it. But this time, when my dad's like, don't feel, feelings are bad. Little like five-year-old me was like, I'm going to cry. I deserve to cry. I deserve to have feelings. And I start crying and I make him watch me. I was like, you're going to watch me feel. I start sobbing. And then in real life, I come back to like the world and I'm crying there. And um, ever since Damn. then, it's heavy. Yeah. Um, it's, it how, sucks. How I'm going to be honest. How long does the uh, experience? Eight well, hours. Eight hours? So yeah. So what are some of the other th- scenarios you got put in then? That's one. That's just one. That's uh, just one. Just one. But do you remember any of the oh, other? Oh, yeah. <laughs> say say one more. Yeah, I'm yeah, ex- yeah. interested. Just give 
one or two more. One or two more. Yeah. Um, Three altogether. <laughs> wait, wait. Is it time? Okay, now it's time. <laughs> a for word ads? from our sponsor. Woo! This podcast is brought to you by My Bookie. My Bookie is the only sports book that offers you online super contest, man. Take this week, for instance. You could turn $10, wait for it, into $10,000 with my bookie, man. You could go all the way and win the grand prize is what I'm telling you. Woo! So use promo code Stevie to double your first deposit today. Again, that's promo code Stevie. S-T-E-E-B-E-E. -E -E -E, to double your first deposit today with my bookie, man. Bet anything, anytime, and anywhere with my bookie and start your winning season today, man. Woo! Five, four, three, two, one. And we're back. I want to hear your second ayahuasca story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope it was a great ad. I, I did it right. It's decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I put effort it? into it. Okay, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Good. I pre recorded it. Yeah. A little warm, a little yeah. buffer between my yeah. emotional sap story. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. good, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> Hope they're, they're selling like antidepressants or something. Hey, thank like... God it wasn't for better help, you know, because I, I have better help in the next few weeks. <laughs> that would have been better, though. <laughs> we're talking about ayahuasca, and that that's competitive towards better help because you're doing some kind of weird thing yeah, yeah, opposed yeah. to talking to a therapist. <laughs> but go to better help next. Tune in next week for better help. Continue. <laughs> okay. uh, 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 my. My family, my dad's family, all, all got, like, these weird things. Like, they committed suicide. They got cancer. All these things happened. And um, I never really thought about it, but um, one of my ceremonies, I hear a voice, and they say, your family's cursed. What? Your family's cursed. And I was like, what? And then I see the movie. Now it's like a shitty Lifetime like Braveheart movie in Scotland, right? <laughs> You're just like this cannot oh, it's be like real. It's going down the timeline of your your bloodline. Yeah. Holy smokes! So apparently, it stays in your DNA. The belief is is that like things that you might have, like let's say you just have this random anxiety in your life and you don't oh, even know where we, it comes it could from. Be back from a, a Korea. Yeah, like a great great grandparent like, like did something by fucked the Korean up. War. Can I tell you even more trippier? I I just discovered in the last few years. We thought I thought. We were all 100% Korean, but my brother, um, I think his podcast, they got sponsored by a DNA group or something, mm -hmm. uh, Ancestor, something like that. And we found out I'm 10% Japanese. Oh. So my mom flipped the fuck up. She was tripping. Oh, because you guys don't like each other? No, but yeah, well, I have no beef with Jap. I love all, <laughs> whatever, dude. Dear all Japanese subscribers. I love <laughs> all my, ja shout out to all my <laughs> Japanese homies out there. No, it's their. I love you, 10%. It's their generation because of the the World War II and you know, Pearl Harbor, all that, yeah. Pearl Harbor, all that. But my mom was like tripping, like, oh, like trying to like trace back when. There was a secret love affair in there. Oh, you might be right. Had to be right. Yeah, or. Like maybe she got, pri oh, you, oh, you think got, there was a little raping? Art. Little raping you happening. You just said it. I didn't want to say it, but you said it. I'm a girl, so I can yeah, say it. Yeah, you can say it. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. They'll cancel no. me. Yeah. Rape. <laughs> rape, <laughs> rape, yeah, rape, okay, rape, okay. rape, rape, rape. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But okay. continue. Well, now I'm. Now I'm. I know. Uh, you know, you're on no, the Scotland I'm brave heart. DNA thing. You, you're talking about your movie. It, it stays in the belief. The, is. the blood. It, the, it stays in there. It stays. It stays in so your it's body. It's a memory. It's a. Yeah. It's in your DNA. It's a memory attached to you. Yep. It's called. That's passed down from generation to generation. Is what you say. Holy smokes. The belief. So there's things that you <sighs> carry, right? And uh, I guess the Scottish side of my family. So shout out to Scotland. You do have Scottish blood. I do. Okay, there you go. Shout out to Scotland. Okay. Um, the Johnston clan. The clan. The clan. It's the like Johnston that movie clan. Highlander. Yes. Remember that? Uh-huh. Was the the, the McLaughlin? McLaughlin. The, the McLeods. Yeah, Campbell's. Yeah, the McLeods. Or All those guys. McGregor, whatever. The clans. Yeah. Bad, fucking that's scary real. Scary motherfuckers. That's real. They're 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 the no joke. Well, you're a warring nation, you know. Not good. Ireland, Scotland, yeah. all that. Boom, boom. Just they do fucked up shit there. Mm -hmm. Or back then, apparently. I started looking into it more after this ayahuasca experience. I didn't really look it up before, until I was on the I was in the ceremony and I see this video or like this movie that's playing in my brain, that's saying um, 
she's like your family has been cursed and i see this montage of like war and another movie yeah but this is not from my life this is like the 1600s it's like i'm watching a, a movie it's like i'm watching braveheart but your family's in it yeah my family is like you warring. see him warring with battle axes and stuff it's like gnarly as fuck like you see blood uh-huh. you see it all all of it disgusting That's horrible insane. it's horrible madness just so are you watching it like you know someone watching a football game from the bleachers is no. it like that or is it more inclusive it's more like i'm watching a tv like a wa- <sighs> you're like you're watching braveheart oh okay so, continue oh dude get this steve yeah then i hear the voice says witches put a curse on your family wait wait witches 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 like put a blair witch like Blair Witch, like witches. witches. Witches put a curse on your family, and they are here right now, and they want an apology. Well, because of what your family did, like, like centuries 400 ago. Four hundred years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, centuries ago. Yep. They want you to apologize for your family name, but you weren't even born yet. But you, you hold the lineage of your bloodline. The curse. And they wanted you, since you're alive, to apologize to the witches. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! This you gotta write a script about this. Or this is insane. It doesn't even sound or real. Or a book. It doesn't. It's, it it's sounds like, like you're losing your mind. Well, I'm like, <laughs> it does in a way. It sounds like yeah, oh, but, but I've this done, is real. This happened. I've done too much. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> it did. Okay, continue because now you really have my attention because I'm obsessed with like horror movies and witches and demons and stuff. These were some wit like badass bitches like wi- they, well witches. I what with they respect. Look like? What do the witches look like? They were just spirits. It's like they were these green spirits in the room. And the voice was like, they want an apology. So then I start crying. Yeah, light it up. I need to keep talking because I need to clear because the witches that. to enter this force field. No, we're good. We're good. Me and the witches are cool. I start crying. Yeah, light that Palo Santo. Get it out. All right. No witches. I just want to. Can we do a little prayer? Dear. No witches are allowed into this space. This space is protected by love and positivity. Continue. Continue. Because you start to scare me, I'm, I can't. I won't be able to sleep tonight. Okay, no witches are allowed here at the Stevie Weeby show. Okay, continue. continue. Okay. So, <laughs> no, continue. This, Just ignore what I'm doing. It's okay. Keep it going. Keep it going. The spirits. The, the spirits. Uh, she's like, they want an apology. I start sobbing. In real life, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what they did. Oh, my God. I'm sobbing. Please, please forgive us. I'm so sorry. And then the voice is like, bring. <laughs> they have lifted the curse. <laughs> oh, like, dude, the, the yeah. curse was lifted. Yeah. I guess I cried hard enough. I tapped into those emotions that oh, I didn't know I had. they felt remorse. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Curse lifted. So are these witches, they're multidimensional? They could skip timelines? They're spirits. Because... I'm trying to figure out. So ayahuasca allows you to enter different dimensions mm-hmm. and timelines throughout history. Mm-hmm. No, here's the thing. I think they were alive during when the curse happened, yeah. and now their spirits are spirits. Yeah, you know what I mean, like little yeah. souls floating around. So I apologize to them. At this point, I'm like, I have done too much ayahuasca. Like I've lost my mind, and this cannot be real. But did you really lose your mind? Well, get this, Steve. I come home after the weekend i'm talking to my sister about this and i was like this can't be real like has she done ayahuasca no i was like this cannot be real this is this shit is this shit's not this is this is bullshit i'm just making up stuff in my mind there's no way i was like you know what actually let's look it up see if there's any any sort of proof that could actually prove that maybe this is real did you google steve would you google johnston family curse that shit fucking existed there's a I book. thought you're a Johnston or Johnson. Johnston. Like Daniel Johnston. Yes, with a tongue. You're a Johnston. Johnston. Continue. So there's a curse, <sighs> apparently. I need, I need to write this down. This, so I, I look up Johnston Family Curse, and then I start looking up the Johnston claim, which I never really researched. Turns out my family used to go into villages and pillage? Gather all the people, put them in a church, burn the church down. That's your lineage? Yeah. Oh, that's no. fucked. You didn't do it. But that's some curse-worthy shit right yeah, there. Yeah, uh, they have uh, resentment. Centuries worth of resentment. And you know where witchcraft originated? Salem? Scotland 
in Ireland. Celtics. That's actually where witchcraft originated. You're right. Celtic. Yep. I was talking oh, to a Salem s- is like later on that's, when they that's came in America over to the later. States. Yeah, yeah right. it's like gotcha, the, gotcha. That's like this the, the 1800s. Original. Is Celtic. Yeah, Celtic. Like 12, 1200, 1400, whatever the fuck. So, oh, dude, you are freaking me out right now. <laughs> you are really freaking me out. Steve, get this. I The weekend I came back, I ran into a random Scottish guy. He had an accent. On the street or at a comedy show? At Where? a comedy show. And I was like, I told him about this experience. He's like, oh, he's like, yeah. He's like, witchcraft is real. He's like, in fact, it's a law. I was like, what do you mean it's a law? He's like, oh, in Scotland, it's illegal to put a curse on somebody. Like, you could go to jail. That means, that's how legit, that's how much they believe in it, that it's like you can't. You can't like steal. You can't murder. You can't put a, a a curse on somebody. That's how much they believe it in Scotland. That's how legit it is out there. So then I was like, "Damn, this shit's real," you know. So you so in a way, if you didn't do the ayahuasca experience, then you wouldn't have lifted the curse, the Johnston witch curse. Yep. Oh my God. You should do it. No. <laughs> Trouble you know, back. Hold up, hold up. Korea you know what's war. crazy is because I don't, you know like coincidences or whatnot you know because I, I, I told i told y'all i don't even on my um algorithm on youtube i don't look that up but it popped up mm. right before y'all came that means it's so calling to you it's calling me yeah oh <laughs> no ayahuasca is calling me it's calling you steve that's what happened to me Random people just started bringing it up to me. Huh? I feel like there's witches <laughs> on my head right now. Like, hold up. I feel witch, a witch's like fingernails. Like, <laughs> you know, it's scary. Um, can you get out one, do one more story. One more story. And then we're going to get to your comedy. We're going to start plugging all your stuff and no. all that. Yeah. I want to hear one more story. Okay. Um, those are the that two. That was in- crazy. Those are the two intense ones. Like the ones that are like, whoa. But one thing that happened was weird is that the sh- well, the shamans, like the shamans, because they take the medicine with you. So they're all on this field. You would think that they would be sober, but How they're not. How are they on the same tangent as you? I thought he has, the shamans have their own brains. They could tune into your, hone into your brain waves. Well, wait, what? The shamans, how do they, like, are they, they that? Take, they take the medicine. But how do they get into your trip? They don't get into your trip, but they're connected to because when you take the medicine it kind of connects you to this like one world thing and everyone kind of in the room can kind of sense everybody what the hell it's like avatar that's crazy your hair's plugged in that's insane it's fucking crazy yeah it's crazy continue so the shaman the shaman walks up to me he's like hey i just want you to know it's okay not to be perfect he told he personally told you that randomly came up to me He's like, Were you thinking these things? No, but then I realized that so many of my problems in my life come from that. So then I started crying again. <laughs> oh. I was like, I told you. And you know what? My dad, my dad was the kind of person who was like, if I didn't get an A, he would tell me I wasn't his child. He did shit like he that? He would say, like, your mom fucks someone else, you're not my child. You know what I'm thinking about, too? Like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, like, going to, because you're violent now, mm-hmm. and then, Maybe subconsciously you wanted to get away from the Johnston family curse. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> That's why. No, no, think about it. That's why you're like, you know, forget this. I'm starting clean slate. I'm a new name. Yeah. I think, have you thought Probably. about that? No, I didn't, but that's very That's insane. Valid it makes sense, though, right? You're be. like, you know, clean slate. I, that's, they Fuck they that all shit. did that dirt. You're going to come back I'm, a new name? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be like Steve Smith. <laughs> yeah. Um. Maybe the ayahuasca is calling. I mean, did you throw it? Like, I've yeah, heard you throw up. a lot. Is that true? Yeah. Did you throw up? You throw up a lot. You throw up when... You when call it purging, right? You purge. Purge. But that's... that's That happens when you when you have something that doesn't serve you, right? Like, uh, let's say... Let's say there's something inside... Well, here. When you're in the ceremony and you discover something about yourself that's maybe toxic, like, you, f- you find a toxic trait, right? And... It's almost like when you find it, you throw it up and it's gone. Really? Yeah. So certain traumas, you throw it up or habits, things like that. And so that's why that's that's why people actually do it. Yeah. To get rid of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you this, because I am in a 12 step program. I don't want to mm-hmm. like because I'm not allowed to discuss it on. Right. But well, 
I can't get addicted to it, right? Like I can no. just do it once, yeah. one and done type yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. You like can't get addicted. The, like same thing with mushrooms, right? You can't get addicted. Well, mushrooms, it would be easier to abuse because it's readily accessible. But with yeah. ayahuasca, you have to talk to a shaman to get approved to go to the to the ceremony. So it's How, not. Do you trust the shamans? I, yeah. There must be some sketchy ones. The ones. Because that's what the lady said on her. She's like, you have to be careful because some people take not, advantage of yeah. you when you're in that ayahuasca, when you're vulnerable. The, the people, the people I sit with, um, they're a lot of them are Native Americans. One of them is actually the, the one of the main chiefs that runs Sundance, the Native American the, not the Sundance. Oh, I thought <laughs> Sundance Film Festival. I'm like, whoa, they're in the film? <laughs> no, Holy smokes. The Sundance. Oh, the real Sundance. The Sundance. Real Sundance. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And, um, you know, if it's something you're interested in, I'll hook you up. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, the good, hook I'll you hook you up. I'll, you have to be referred. You do? Mm -hmm. You can't just find these people. Do I have to go to Peru? No. You could do it here? I can't tell you because technically it's... Oh, yeah, but you have a hookup, yeah, somewhere. Uh huh. Oh my god. Now, did Tor has Tori done this? No, I want her to though. Do you, how, do you think it'll be beneficial for your friend Tori? Yeah, because I I brought my I brought my boyfriend because he's dyslexic, and so did it help him? It did, and Tori's dyslexic. I did not know that. Yeah. So it kind of, there's basically in dyslexia, there's a disconnect between the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Like the yeah. bridge is almost don't broken. Don't you look at things backwards or something? I don't that know. I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you can, you, you can't read sometimes. Oh, you right, can't right, understand. Right, right. There's basically, there's the, the your, your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere are always talking to each other. Mm -hmm. But with people who are dyslexic, that bridge is, is um, not consistent. Yeah, I don't want to say broken because I don't look at dyslexia as being broken, no, but just, yeah. it's it's kind of a little bit just not it's 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 a little fucked up, right. you know. So with ayahuasca, a lot of people have, that have dyslexia have done it, and it's basically kind of helped build that bridge and fix it for them. Now, if I um, if I were to choose to do it, can I set intentions? You have to. Oh, I just came up with that. See? So if my, okay, because this is what I want to do. I'm like really obsessed with the aliens and uh -huh. all that stuff. Uh, will I be able to communicate with aliens? If you set your intention, if you set your intention, but the thing is, is the medicine, the medicine is a spirit. So she will guide you for what you really need. I want to go on a UFO. I want to do the whole thing. I want to go to the <laughs> Zeta Reticuli. I want to like talk to all kinds of different. I want to talk to the feet. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, the the Lyran, the like cat, the <laughs> cat, the cat aliens. I want to like I want to have you know, I want to do a little trip like like Disneyland yeah. for aliens. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I want to I want to you know, ask the reptilians why they do the, all that dirt and why do they live off people's <laughs> luge and negative energy. I want to talk to the tall whites. I want to talk to like <laughs> I want to talk to like ten different alien races and <laughs> try to figure it out. Like, hey, like, why did you? What's going on? Why? What's the whole purpose of Earth? Why haven't you like helped us? You know what I mean? Yeah. With free energy and all that <laughs> stuff. I uh, I got a I got some questions I need to ask. Uh. Yeah, I want to talk to aliens. I really do. Well, you know what? You might not be able to do it on the first time, but I think eventually you probably will. Now, are there bad trips where? There's like a hell dimension. Um, it's less about. Here's the thing. I think ayahuasca is less about <sighs> your soul. I think when your soul's born, it's it's perfect, and then life happens, and it bruises things, it breaks stuff, mm -hmm. and sometimes we know the things that have been broken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're not even aware of our bruises. And ayahuasca, Continue, yeah. ayahuasca basically helps you heal those. So there's parts of you that you might not know are holding you back. And then you discover it and you're like, oh, that's the root of this problem. Like fears? Yeah. Like fears that are like deep down, like from childhood trauma or something like that? Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. There's, Steve, there's so many things... Dude, life. That's cool. When we're born, we're like this pure little soul. Yeah. And then we're thrushed into the, this imperfect world. Yeah. And it's just, it's like, uh, 
you know, we're not, we're not built to handle that. And so it has, you have to, ayahuasca more or less is like spring cleaning for your soul. Right. Um, I've also, um, ever since my dad died, uh, cause I watched his life leave his body. When was this? Like 2019, August. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. So it happened. So both of our dads died recently. Yeah. Well, not um, very recent, but. But, I, uh, ever since that moment happened, I, it completely shifted my thoughts of life. Mm. Cause you know, especially in LA and we're around this, you know, I'm not quite so in the stand up specifically, but you know, I podcast, I'm around comedians, but I noticed like everyone in that community is like grind, grind, grind more, more, more book this book this. Oh, I'm on this, this, you know, like, Oh, did you book the show? But you know, but it's like once I saw my dad, cause, cause my dad in his defense or whatever is he worked his whole life like money, 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 uh, open up another clothing store, you know, drive this van to, you know, to lug the, the, you know, this, these dresses to this store, you know, the mm. merch over, you know, it's just constant work, 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 dude. And then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, well, he, he didn't take, he can't take the house with you. You can't take the car. You can't, you know what I mean? Can't take any of it. Yeah. So it really, it really freaked me out. I was just like, oh, that's it. Do you think he died happy um that i don't know i i just know that i know um because i looked this up uh the thing that i saw him do because i was the only one that witnessed it because what had happened was me my brother and my mom had visited him earlier on that day at the nursing home and they we left to go home and i'm like i knew like i don't know if it was a voice but i knew that like oh he's i realized he was gonna die that week isn't that weird how that happens? Yeah, and the, you the can way feel I found it. that out, the way that I found that out was f- kind of messed up because no one had explained to me that I thought that he had a chance. Oh. I didn't know that. No, people at this place die because mm. I walked by a room and I saw an older lady in one of the rooms the night, you know, the day before. I came back the next day and that room was cleared out, like she had passed that night, or you know what I'm saying. Because I was looking in the rooms. I was walking, you know, I was like, oh, <laughs> You're yeah. like, this is the recovery yeah, center. The nurse- yeah, I've never been to one of those. So I'm like looking in. I'm like, oh, you know, you know, I was being nosy. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I was like, um, once I figured that out, I'm like, oh, like, I, 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 I got to spend as much time as I can this week. Well, fucking thank God you figured that out. Why is that? Because what if you hadn't? Yeah, because when I went, okay, so I didn't want to lose tra- uh, my train of thought. When I had decided to take a shower and I was going to come back to the nursing home at whatever, past midnight, that had happened. I, he, and he had seen visions in the ceiling, and I looked it up, and it's, there's a term for it. It's called deathbed visions, mm-hmm. where when a person's about to pass over, like they, they like hallucinate or they see a different dimension That's of the DMT. past loved ones. come. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. Korean, especially in Korean mythology or Korean belief, systems they believe that a person in a suit and like a fedora whether it's his dad or uncle or whatever whatever comes to co- get them wait this is in this is in korean the koreans believe this okay that like a man in a suit comes back <laughs> i <laughs> know it's scary, it's he's scary. Like, i know he's like the butler <laughs> yeah he, he probably he's, he's like, like right like, with right with his way so a black and white like a black suit black hat so i'm like um sounds like they got good dry cleaning in the afterlife yeah so you're saying I, that's ayahuasca release when he was because he was about he because i think he passed away that morning i think okay yeah that would yeah. be that would be the dmt releasing yeah because the the enzyme basically so there's dmt in your body right now there's dmt in everything in our brain like it's in our it's it's in you it's in your body it's yeah. in plants food but there's an enzyme your body produces that blocks it. That blocks it. Hmm. And then when, but when you die, the enzyme deactivates and it's released and it's released. That's what, so ayahuasca ha- yeah. deactivates the enzyme. Oh, it does. So you can for trip. eight hours yeah. so that you can experience what's inside of you. Yeah. Um, did you, do you have family addiction in your family? Like drugs and alcohol? My, my mom, so my mom has schizophrenia. I didn't know that. She was locked up in a mental ward most mm-hmm. of my life. She, ironically, from doing acid. So I was very nervous about doing any sort of psychedelics in case it was a dormant. Wait, are you telling me your mom did LSD back in the day mm-hmm. and it, it tr- did something to her brain? 
snapped. Cause I I experienced really bad trips on LSD uh, when I, in Arizona, where I saw like ghosts or demons in my dorm room. Scrambles it. So shamans believe that LSD actually scrambles the brain. Yeah. Okay. So continue. So when did your mom like lose her mind? Like nineteen. Like, what? Nineteen years old. She was nineteen. Uh. Then when did what? How old was she when she had you? Thirty. Yeah, so four how did, kids. But how did she deal with like? How did she? How did she manage that? She didn't. She was she locked was just, up. She was just losing her mind. There would be weeks where she would come back from the hospital, and <laughs> more Paul <Santos. laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I love. I love it. That's That's scary. My favorite thing. I'm sorry. Just continue talking. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, by the yeah, way, yeah. You know, I mean that's that's cool. You. You disclose that. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. I think I, I remember your dad. Pa- yeah. You've mentioned that the last. No, I didn't. Because it, did it. it happened a month after oh, I then was here. This is all new. It's all new. Yeah. Okay. Um, my mom. My mom has <laughs> schizophrenia. And uh, she basically. She would go in the hospital. They would fix her after a month. She'd come back. Mm-hmm. She'd be good for like a week. And then she would slowly start deteriorating. And I would have to watch her in the hospital it, at home. I would oh, watch her every day to see is she having a mental breakdown. And usually she would last like maybe a couple of weeks. And then I would have to call the police and convince them that my mom's crazy and to come take her away in a straitjacket. And that cycle would repeat every couple months. Like what kinds of things did she do? She would like walk around and, and, and say like there's demons in the house. There's demons everywhere. And then... Um, she would think that they're writing things on her arms. Like stigmata. Yeah, I've never seen oh, that, but it so sounds scary. like it. Yeah. She's like, they're writing things. And then she would pace around the kitchen. She would just walk in circles around the island. In fact, if you looked at our house, the 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 floor was actually worn in. And the circle. Oh, I need to light a little bit more of this. <laughs> uh, you're really starting to scare me. <laughs> okay, walking in circles. Walking in circles, uh, so it's if you look at our old house, <laughs> it's like it's very worn in. There's a there's a this trail. This is in Minnesota. Minnesota. There's a trail around the island. She would just walk in circles now, all day. What do you mean island? The kitchen island? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you know, like in the kitchen. Yeah, oh yeah, there's okay, that little center still, thing. Right, 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 right. There's That's a little. Island. There's like a little. So she's center. walking. Around. She would walk around it all right, day. Right, right. All day. So, so the floor is actually so like, like all track. faded. Yeah, like a racetrack. Yeah, like in high school the. The track and field track. Yeah, near star the football athlete field. Yeah. around the kitchen. But she would just walk around. How many times would you say she would walk around it? Hundreds? Hundreds. She would do for, that For all? hours. She would just keep doing that. Hours. That must have been scary to witness. I was just normal. Oh, me. so you got desensitized to yeah. it. Yeah. Did you... Oh, man, this is so freaky because when you said demons or... Because when I when I did LSD, I, I, saw, I felt like I saw different like hell dimensions. Yeah. Where when when I was in the bathroom and I saw these entities, they're human, but they look dead, and they they I saw their hands and their like faces, like it was more like, oh, you do you see you see me? So shamans believe that it scrambles your brain and it actually can make you stuck between the worlds. So your mom, oh, she never made it back. Yeah, I think she's stuck. She's stuck in between. They so there's people I'm stuck between dimensions. Yeah, she she's stuck. And there's people, there's shamans that have actually been able to take people that have done LSD and are stuck and, and use ayahuasca to fix them and bring them back and bring them back from that kind of weird limbo. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. It does. Yeah. So it she was stuck in the netherworld, like on some other tip where she was r- actually seeing something we couldn't see. She mm-hmm. was actually seeing that. Well, and then I do believe that it attracts them if you can, you know well, what I mean? It attracts who? I think that if you're in that in that weird space, yeah, the Lord just like, like how those people came to you, yeah, they're like this. It it's attracts like you because they know you can feel them. Yes, you know, it's like a magnet. I couldn't get away from them because my what ended up happening is my friend got arrested that day. He uh-huh. w- like ran on campus and grabbed some girl's arm and he got pepper he was, spray. And he was on LSD. Yeah, I ruined his trip because like I was like in the bathroom and I uh, he was like, "What are you doing in there?" And I go, "There's demons in here, dog." And then I pushed him. <laughs> Don't shit in that one, dude. <laughs> yeah, There's him. fucking the devil's watching, dude. Yeah, to- stole all the toilet paper. Yeah, but I felt like that as the day progressed, it was a dark day. I uh, when I laid on my back uh, in the dorm room bed, and they're now on my ceiling. 
more oh. of them. Oh, yeah. Covering the whole ceiling. You know that granulated rock texture? Yeah. It was that, but I could see them. Like, oh. And they were looking down at me. I need the Palo Santa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, you know what reminds me of like Superman too. Like you know those three villains stuck in that glass. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, and they're like, uh, and they're fly, they're flying. Oh yeah, God. <laughs> but you, you've seen Superman too. Those yeah, three yeah, yeah. villains, they're like all dressed in black, but they they all have Superman's powers, mm-hmm. right? They're trying to get through. Yeah. So tell me what happened. Wh- how's your mom? Like, tell me what happened with your mom. Well, she's still. She's still. Yeah, she's not she all the way in there. Some kind of facility, or I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I, I talk to her once every six months now. She She's not a nursing home or anything? She, I, this sounds very fucked up. And for those people who are listening who have family, who have yeah. situations like this, you know, it sucks because your whole life you just want to fix them, you know, and you do yeah. everything you can to fix them. And then at some point you realize, and that was part of my journey with ayahuasca, I always, people around me, I always was trying to fix them. Yeah. And I realized that that stemmed from me trying to fix my mom. Oh. And I came to terms, like, I love her for who she is. I love her with, you know, who she is as a person and the circumstances, and I've accepted them. But those circumstances are not healthy for me. And to, because it's, she's, you know, she's a very good person, but her behavior is very toxic yeah and she doesn't understand boundaries and and things like that and so you know i realized that i had to create a boundary yeah because she which she doesn't respect boundaries so i that basically i block her on everything and then when i feel like i have the energy and i'm in the mental place to talk to her i will call her how old is she she's like 60 something oh she's young still yeah for, thanks for reminding yeah. me i got a while to go <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, now, how are your siblings dealing with her? Are they, do they approach that I- in the same way? They've started to. They like kind of distance themselves. Yeah. Is she alone? Um. Yeah. She has a. Uh, she has like a government team that visits her now. So she okay. And then she they bring her to the hospital when she has to. So the go- the government handles it, which is honestly, you know, w- just now we've started to see a shift in our government and health professionals really starting to understand mental illness and right. approaching it in a healthier way. Is because she on medication? Yeah. They they watch her meds and make sure and that she takes them. And right. Because it's hard, you know. It's hard, yeah. Because well, they'll have, they'll forget to take a pill. Yeah. And then they start losing it and then they start thinking all my pills are evil. Oh, they, they go, they get to that. Yeah. And then they're like, and then. Do they flush them down the toilet or they, they yeah, get yeah, paranoid yeah. about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then I, I actually, one time I was driving my mom to the hospital. She jumped out of the car while I was moving. Like the car was moving. She jumped out of the car because she didn't want to go to the hospital. Really? Yeah. Daniel Johnston did the same thing. Rest in peace. Uh, he had a uh, dementia or schizophrenia. He had something. No where way. He was uh, flying in the airplane and he took the key out of the thing. And it is, he, comi- is he a comedian? No, Daniel Johnston's a musician. Uh-huh. Um, where, um, what did I do with this shirt? Oh, no. Yeah, can you throw it? Yeah, he's uh he uh he he was you know I discovered him you know that movie Kids it was like an older movie but yeah, he yeah. um he sang Casper the Friendly Ghost and okay. a couple other songs cool and uh but he had a he had a kind of a mental thing going on too mm-hmm. there's a good uh, documentary called The Devil and Daniel Johnston okay I highly recommend but it's about the stuff we're talking about he he dealt with that I mean there he was in a plane. So his dad had to like recover and fly the plane straight into some trees. He opened it. No, they're in the. <gasps> oh, they were in a private. They plane. were in a private, like a mini, one of those mini planes. Right. He's like, I can fly. Yeah, he thought he was Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. <funny>. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but it's sad. it's tragic too. But they didn't die then. But uh, is he dead now? Yeah, he died not because of the not. He didn't die in the plane crash or anything. He died like later in life. If only could have healed the trauma for the Johnston clan before he died. Yeah, oh, I didn't. That didn't occur to me till you brought it up. Maybe there was some kind of curse on the John. He was a Daniel Johnston. Yeah. All right, so let's start talking about your comedy now. <laughs> this is where we have uh, we have about twelve minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, we have twelve minutes left. This is insane. You know what? This is a delight though, because this is the last thing I thought we'd talk. I didn't think that you did that or experienced that but so now with your comedy is it therapeutic to 
do you write about this stuff in your act? I haven't talked about, you know, it's interesting, actually, your brother, Bobby. Yeah. For years, for years, it's like, when are you going to talk about your mom on stage? He said that? Yeah. He's like, when are you going to talk about your mom on stage? And he's like, you have to talk about her. And I've tried so many times, and I don't know. I, I haven't tried since I've done ayahuasca, but no, I have a little bit. I haven't been able to make it funny. Yeah, that's, I, that must be a slippery slope to 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 turn something tragic like that into, like, comedy. Like, I know that's so weird you brought up my brother because I I normally don't watch the shows. Or, but he did. I did go to him last week or the week before to the OR, the comedy store, and I was watching his set. Mm-hmm. Oh, Martin Lawrence actually stepped in to do a guest spot. Yeah, he's w- been there a lot. That was a trip. I because you know I grew up with watching him on TV and stuff. He's so funny. yeah, I know. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Because I, you know, I you hear stories like, uh-huh. oh, dude, Dave Chappelle was there. But anyway, I was watching my brother set, and he did do new material about my father. Wow. And I that kind of I that kind of shocked me. I'm like, whoa, he already. So and I think it's therapeutic for him to do well, that. I'm so I'm so proud of him. I haven't seen him the last couple of months, but I ran into him earlier this year and he said, he's like, I'm not doing any of my old material. He's like, I'm throwing yeah, it away. Cause he's been doing a lot of that material since for the nineties. For, yeah. For 20 something years, more than 20 years, 30 years. I won't let him off the hook yet. I, he still needs to do a special. Dude, I've that's been saying like, dude, that. That's your album, bro. Like that's, you know, if you're a musician, right? That's mm-hmm. like the Beatles, the white album, Abbey Road. Like you got to release your album. You have to. You have to. And it, and you know, cause before he didn't want to release a special because he said that he was worried he couldn't tour with it anymore, but now you're doing old material. You, now you're doing new material. So you might as well tape your old material and make it into a special. Not only that, I know the psychology behind it and why he hasn't cause you're forced. And this is a good thing you're forced to write new material once that's out in the universe. Right. It's like once you record an album, right? You already, that's those songs are out. Mm -hmm. So now, you know what I mean? He was nervous to write new material, but now he's doing it. Yeah. Now he's slowly starting to throw things in there. I noticed. I'm like, Oh, I've never heard that one. So it took a while. I mean, I just hope, I'm not asking the world. I mean, I just I'm asking them to release one special. Just one, dude. Because there's there's cats that have done comedy way less years than him. They have like, ten specials on Netflix. Exactly. He's done comedy since ninety four, ninety five. He's one of the funniest people I've ever seen. Yeah, he's just and I I agree too. Like he's just, I I wish he. I wish you would do the same. Yeah. I feel the same Well, way. it's up to him. It is. It is up to him. And yeah. he has to have his own journey. But when when I saw him earlier, uh, when we were on a show, and he was like, I'm writing all new material. And I was like, dude, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm so proud of him. Yeah, me too. Because I know, too. It, you know, it's scary for him. and It is scary. Because you have to, it's kind of like a security blanket. I can only imagine, oh, yeah. like, if y'all know this particular thing works, it's like, you know, it's proven. And it makes you money. Yeah, it's like if it's not broke, why fix it? It's but in this situation, you have to st- build a whole new another car. Like he's, you know what? Here's the thing, he's the kind of person that he's gonna write a new hour, and it's gonna be even funnier than before. Yeah, I hope so. And we're gonna be like, holy fucking shit! Well, there's a lot of obstacles as well because, like, let's keep in mind, let's not forget that he just doesn't want to pursue comedy he wants to do tv he wants to do movies he wants to, you know what i mean because a lot of that that's a lot yeah to memorize lines someone else wrote yeah again like oh i have to write well, there's like pages of the stuff i have to memorize and you're tired because you've been working on set all day not only that you're traveling you're on planes you're when are you gonna do stand up i'm i'll get there eventually like like that's crazy you brought that up because Jer- i was in vegas with jeremiah uh-huh and it was a smaller club there and the second show the one of the the acts didn't show up and i'm i was i was there to to be of service mm-hmm. I, my program's all about service how could i help you so i was like setting up his merch <laughs> but then people kept asking for me like yeah bring me on but then that second show i, I cuz i i want to be of service i didn't have an act Okay. But, but I was like, but I, I swear to God, I was going to do it. My adrenaline was pumping. I said, hey, I'll go up. I'll do, I'll, I'll do some, I'll go up on stage, whatever you need. 
But Jeremiah wanted to like safeguard me oh. and be like, all right, well, what are you going to talk about? And then I should have said this, but I'm like, I said nothing. I don't got anything. Dude, <laughs> first of all, you could have just went up there. Yeah, I know. But I should have so done it. You've never been on stage before? No, I did. do. Con- I was hitting up open mics all the time. Oh, you were? You have. I just bombed really badly in Tempe. Oh. I did a cowboy. I've told this story. A thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did a cowboy rap, and I, it was, and a, it tr- it was well. traumatic. Yeah, it was horrible. It was sold out. Like, this, it was packed. To the Tempe point, Improv. Tempe Improv. We it, talked about this in the last yeah, podcast, because that room yeah. is, yeah. that room's also kind of scary. It it's is. so big. There's like and then 600 keep in mind, people. I used to work there as a food runner. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a, I What's was, up, Steve? Keep those chicken tenders. Keep uh, going. Yeah, anyway, so I was, I was, I was at like the beach. Going, going back to it. No, I'll eventually get there. Let me. I want to write something first. Because I thought of it this way. I'm not. I'll do it. Because um, Scissor Bros, we just did a comedy festival, like a podcast thing. In, in uh, Austin, Yeah, in right? Austin. So I'm thinking, like, dude, if I had, like, three to five or ten, you know, eventually ten minutes, then I could open up for Jeremiah. Tour with it. And then maybe tour with it. Because we have a whole, yeah. like, as a collective, we have a fan base. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that makes sense. And that'd be fun. It would be fun. And not only that, it would, it would force me to, like, get out of my comfort zone to get back on the horse again and be like, dude, like, just... Suck it up, and this is a new experience. Write a whole new hour, and then go to Bobby. Be like, do you like my new hour? No, I, just I wouldn't do that. Don't be bold. I wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. no. Let's uh, timestamp that. <laughs> We're not, I'm not, I'm Take not, that I'm, out. He's still my older brother. No, no, no. no. That's disrespectful. No, I wouldn't do that because you're not the first one that said that. Seriously. Dude. Take it out. Take if it you out. If start comedy, dude, you can beat them to the punch. If you're, you're special, dude. Wait, who is that? I don't want to say. I don't want to throw it anyone looks under so the bus. Familiar. I'm not gonna throw anyone. Well, under you're, the ta- bus. you're taking this out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, no, I won't. I'm gonna leave it in. What? But, um, yeah, I would do it. It would make sense more now because I'm like, well, I do. We, do, you know, we're, you know, catching some momentum doing this podcast. And now it's like so open. It's, you know, things, there's different formats of comedy, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I didn't know how that worked, by the way, the festival thing. Like, I just stayed in my it's room. Confusing. And watched it's confusing. It's weird. I was eating beef jerky in my hotel room. You did it the best way you could. I was watching Star Wars and just being antisocial. Yeah. That's honestly probably the best way to do it. Because he was like, Every hour, hey, dude, come to this club. Come this per, you know, I'm like, well, you're like, I don't want to meet people in Austin. And I didn't even have my, uh, you need a pass. I always left it in the hotel room, so I'd show up. And he's like, dude, where's your pass? You're like, thanks for reminding me I'm, I'm not like, famous enough to get in. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> you need this pass to attend these events, Steve. <laughs> but, you, you know, I, I didn't know. <laughs> but let's go back to, I want to start plugging. God, dude, time flew by. You're always welcome back on this platform so is tori we love tori here i want to let the uh viewers and listeners know how they could best support you right now like how they could buy your merch where they could buy tickets how they could your social media your websites go ahead sure so well instagram at violet jones okay that's the place violet jones violet jones and you're uh, at you're certified violet jones. too and i'm blue checked you're blue checked i'm blue checked that's amazing. It is amazing. I've tried a hundred times. Really? Yeah. And it doesn't work? Dear Instagram. I've had people who kind of like know people there. And it doesn't and happen? <laughs> Nothing. You know what? It's okay. I've accepted it. <laughs> There's worse things in life. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not good to have a blue check mark. It gets to your head. You start thinking that you're successful. I would do it because wouldn't it help because it's like, like for... For me, it's like I have a podcast. It, Reaching out to guests. If I want to guests, get a guest, yeah. and then they see that I have blue check mark, they'll be more prone to do it. That's all. Yeah. They're like, That's this all. guy yeah. probably has a podcast studio, yeah, not in his apartment. Yeah, it, it just looks better. <laughs> but continue. Let's go. Let's plug your stuff, our website, all that. Um, mm-hmm. Violet Jones. Violet Jones. Just everything? on Instagram. Everything? Yeah. Any, like, upcoming shows you want to promote? I, I'm going to start touring next year. Back on the road. Okay. And... Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's interesting. I'm with the, all the change during COVID and kind of like the, just all the growth I'm looking at creating content in different ways and like exploring art and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so I'm thinking about bringing back so aggressive, but probably in a different capacity. Yeah. And so my Instagram is going to start, I'm going to start making content on there again. Mm-hmm. I like the stuff with you and Tori. Thank you. Yeah. Don't you all have a podcast? We did. 
What we happened? did. We did for a couple weeks. Hey. And people loved it. Why don't you bring that back? Tori just was too. She has a podcast with her mom, and she was too stressed out having more than one podcast. She's dyslexic. I'm doing three right now. I know, but I think for her, days are filled. You, she's got time. I know. I people loved it. She could do it with her mom. That's like no big, you know. She mascara. That was the podcast, and people loved it. People, we had so much fun. Like, why don't you bring it back? I wish I wanted. No, but I did. Your didn't you have your own podcast? So aggressive. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Well, did you stop doing that? I stopped it during COVID. No, you got to do it again. I think so. They're going to bring it back. I'm thinking that it's going to be more, you know, I think before I created things because people told me I had to. But don't you want to do it? I, you and Tori are friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. But I was so focused on, okay, what's the demographic and like who's the branding and all these things instead of just going, what do I want to make? Right. What would be fun for me? Right. What do I enjoy? talking about because mm-hmm. i never asked that mm-hmm. i was so worried about being perfect that you, i didn't you know you like you don't have to be perfect you just thank you just shaman make, yeah, steve yeah <laughs> you just just make things because that's that's the one thing like even like going back to my dad it's like okay well what what do i get out of that there's right. some things that you like when i die they're still going to be here, like, you know, Little my Ray. podcast, my, the music, every, all the things that I do and put energy towards. And you love this. I can tell you love. You know what's interesting? I think this is why your podcast is so successful and people love it. It's getting there. It's not completely <laughs> successful yet. But here's the thing. What yeah. do you define as success? I define successful as you have people who look forward to listening to your podcast. Every yeah, week. and that that matters. Which means you're fulfilling somebody. It matters. And that's success. It matters. Yeah. And the thing is, and then it's a bonus if you can make any kind of income on top of that to yeah. help pay the rent. That helps. It does help. Yeah. Shout out to Patreon. Shout out to Patreon. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, but that's why I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get on Tori after this. I'm gonna yeah. oh yeah. Be like, listen. I'm gonna be like, dude, you ginger I bitch. Know you're busy, but you have time to do another. Well, let me know this. Do. What do you think? So I was thinking about bringing So Aggressive back and doing, having people call in with their revenge stories because I love revenge. I'm a, a I'm a Scorpio. I love revenge. Oh, you're a Scorpio? Yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Yeah. You know, hey, I'll you? tell you this much. Your man's safe. Cause, He's safe? Yeah, because you, you'll protect. Yeah, you'll protect that with your Got stinger. Him. Oh yeah. I don't care if he, I I tell him like go fuck somebody. No, don't put that out in the universe. Timestamp that. <laughs> no. I do. Women. What do you mean? Because well, I'm bisexual, so I hook up with women. That's a whole other podcast. We'll do that in part <laughs> two. <laughs> a Violet Jones. A Violet Jones coming soon. So what do you think, Steve? What you do just you th- just do it. Okay. Just do just it. Just do it. Not only that. So you have people like. Me, I'll help you. Jeremiah can help you. I'll tell you the things you could get. Mm-hmm. You don't need to actually go because I know last time you had a spot and yeah, you probably yeah, had yeah. to chip them off. Don't do any of that. Okay. Dude, I film in this little room. And it's the coolest setup I've ever seen. This, this. She's great. Do you, you want to be my set decorator? Um, I did this out of fear because when I finally got my stuff, I just put stickers everywhere impulsively. I'm like, oh. You're just accidentally but, but, an amazing but, artist. But people, but people kind of have taken from it. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but uh-huh. certain podcasts, they kind of followed suit too. Yeah, because it's I dope. did this out of necessity because I'm poor. <laughs> I don't have as much money as them. So The I best just, art comes from people. I'm just saying, I just kind of put things up. <laughs> what are you laughing at, man? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um. So my advice to you, uh-huh. just start doing it again. Yeah. Ho- start hopping on other podcasts mm-hmm. to promote it. Maybe you could be a guest on Scissor Bros. Would you like I'd love that? to. I'll talk to Jeremy. Yeah. I love we Jeremy. We could do that. Uh, we could plug it that way. Okay. All kinds of different things. Okay. Thanks. Steve. Talk to Tori, though. You do you want to do it solo? or You could do it solo or with Tori. I don't know. I think the solo thing's cool because then I can just... What I was thinking is like I just... I, I have my followers or listeners call in and they tell me a revenge story that they did. That's actually a good look. So you do more interactive stuff yeah. with your fans where yeah. they call in. So it's not all on you. I don't want to have to worry about like getting s- people to do my podcast, famous person numbers. I'm like, I just want to like, 
I don't even care about the numbers. I just want to. You can hang. do whatever you want. You don't necessarily have to do that. No, I just. Because I, mean, I felt the pressures of that. You know what I mean? The I pressure feel the pressures of having of the guests. Oh, my God. Do you know how many guests just, uh, nah, I'm not going to do yeah, that. Can we, just, yeah, this? can we talk about this? Can we talk about that? I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. But you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. It's like, dude, I just want to do the art. Yeah, just do it. And I don't, it's like not only that, it'll be a good platform because like when you have upcoming comedy shows, you could plug it there. It's just it just helps. Yeah, that's all the business that I just it's like, you know what? Something I would enjoy. I would love to hear my followers and listeners call in and be like, I fucking did this to my boss. Why don't you do this? Exactly. Why don't you do this? Make a section of I Io- the ayahuasca corner. <laughs> Where, you feel where, bad where, about where their revenge you, you did? have your viewer, you, your your fans call in and share their experience. On ayahuasca? That's yeah, cool. Yeah, dude. I like that. He- dude, revenge you know, and healing? Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah. That would that's be a dope. niche thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Dude, you're always welcome. Thanks, thanks Steve. For, thanks for, um, did, did we get your uh, Instagram? Viola right? Jones, baby. Yeah. Vi- <laughs> yeah. Viola Jones. There's no Viola underscore Jones. or anything? No, that's... So it's just Violet Jones, everyone. Just Violet Jones. V I O L E T J O N E S. I think so. Did I do that right? <laughs> I think so. Okay, thanks for tuning in uh, to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. If you want to uh, help support the platform, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Uh, Stevie Weeby Bandcamp.com is where all my music is. Uh, go to um, Stevie Weeby uh, You know, that's my website. Just know that the orders are a little. Um, We'll be a little delayed because of what's going on. Um, what else? Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Uh, I do have a P.O. box. I need to go check it. I've been lazy, but, I, but this month has been crazy. I'll, I'll check it. Send all your packages and mail or whatever to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. It was an honor having you. Thank you, Steve. Oh, shout out. I want to do this shout out. Uh, shout out to Gable Steveson. Who won the? He's from Uni- University of Minnesota. Oh, okay. Won the gold medal in wrestling. Gable Stevenson, University of Minnesota. Woo woo woo! Go yeah. Gophers! Go Gophers! Oof. The maroon and yellow. Golden, golden, <laughs> golden red. Golden red. <laughs>